Hello again, Paul Norell here. Um, in the second part of my look at GMT Games Musket and Pike series, I'd like to focus on one of the battles in Volume 2, Sweden Fights On, the Battle of Nordlingen. Now the Battle of Nord Nordlingen, which was fought on the 6th of September 1634, was the first major defeat for the Swedish army since the death of King Gustav Adolf two years earlier. It came about as a result of an attempt by the Swedes and their German allies under Bernhard of Saxe-Weimar and Marshal Horn to relieve the town of Nordlingen, currently besieged by the combined Spanish and Imperial armies under the Cardinal Infanta Ferdinando and the Archduke Ferdinand of Austria. The Swedes suffered an humiliating defeat, in no small part due to a divided and fractious command, faulty appreciation of the terrain, and unimaginative tactics. By contrast, the Habsburg armies enjoyed the benefits of a strongly entrenched defensive position and an harmonious dual command. Now for the purpose of this replay, I intend to look at just one section of the battlefield. The Swedish right wing, commanded by Marshal Horn, with the infantry under the command of Witzhum, and the cavalry under Shavalitsky. Not only does this make for less complication, but it was also the area where the principal engagement was fought and where the entire battle was, in effect, won and lost. Now the Swedes begin the battle with a series of violent charges against the Albuch Ridge, held by Serbaloni with two Spanish and one Imperial battalions in a number of redoubts. The Swedish brigades of Ransau and Horn are already poised to assault the entrenchments, while Shawalitsky's horse is intending to outflank the position and strike at the Catholic forces defending Schmeich. So let's start the first turn. Now I've taken the option of deploying some of the cavalry in open order because as you will see the terrain does impact quite markedly on this part of the battlefield and open order allows units to move without taking formation hits. First to take an action is Witzum's infantry wing, which has charge orders and therefore takes precedence over wings with other orders on both sides, I might add. Ransau, using salvo and regimental guns, inflicts two hits, a formation hit and a morale check on Leslie's battalion, which stands firm. Wurmser, however, fired on by Horn, is broken and routs immediately. Witzum gets a second action, and this time Württemberg is shaken by fire from Saun, which is itself broken by musket fire. Ransau inflicts more casualties on Leslie, which becomes shaken. Horn now advances, becoming a formation broken because it takes two hits, one for advancing up a steep slope and one for entering an entrenchment. Witzhum fails to get a third action and so play now passes to Shawalitsky's cavalry wing. Shawalitsky has make ready orders which allows him full movement capability but not to move adjacent to an enemy. All squadrons move to the right toward the imperialist and Spanish troops on the Catholic left flank. A second action allows the units with and adjacent to the commander to perform a rally action which removes the open order marker from those units while remaining units cross the stream and move up in support. 
The Shovelitsky uh, gets a third action. He has a bonus modifier because he's a cavalry wing. And he also succeeds in altering his orders to charge, which will allow the first line to contact the enemy. Now notice that the defenders are permitted to react by changing facing to meet the attack and also those Swedish units that cross the stream they take a formation hit. Pistol fire first and those units that can fire their pistols defender first. A unit that reacted by changing facing cannot fire its pistols at this time but can as a reaction to attacker's pistol fire or another unit moving adjacent. The result is that only one unit, Gamba Korta, takes a hit and it passes its morale test. So we move to combat. Kratzenstein and Rothstein are both attacking Piccolomini but at 8 to 5 they do not have enough for a bonus of uh, 2 to 1 odds. All three units fire their pistols giving the Swedes a net plus 1 but they are formation shaken so get a minus 1. The Imperialists are one morale level higher so the net result is minus 1 for the attackers. The Dragoons take no part well, despite the minus one, the Swedes manage to roll an eight, which converts to a seven, and the defenders are broken and rout. Both Swedish units test for pursuit, adding plus one because they are under charge orders. Kratzenstein pursues and eliminates Gallus and Piccolomini, which are placed in the dead box, while Rothstein pursues off the map. Now, as the other three Swedish units would be attacking at a disadvantage, they decline to engage, and as combat is not compulsory, play will now pass to the imperialist player. The two wings that concern us here are General Le Legane's cavalry wing of the Army of Flanders and Gallus's imperialists, but with Gallus eliminated, his wing can do nothing at present, which leaves the Spanish currently under receive charge orders. Now Leganes does not have to change his orders to engage in combat with units already adjacent, but he needs to if he wants to bring other units into action. He fails to change his orders, however, um, and the two Spanish units in contact can initiate fire combat and close combat. Latour fires at Wrangle, causing it to rout. And with no further action taken, all broken units continue their rout moves and the turn comes to an end. A couple of things to mention uh, before moving on. The Imperialists uh, receive a replacement commander now that Gallus is eliminated and you'll also notice that the pursuing Swedish cavalry unit has to run the gauntlet of uh, three Imperial cavalry units who are able to use reaction fire. The Swede takes two hits and becomes shaken. Now moving on to turn two, uh, you see that during the previous turn Horn joined Vitsum where he can now do one of two things using his command modifier. He can influence a change in the wing commander's orders or he can influence obtaining a subsequent action. He cannot do both and Witsum needs to change his orders if he wants to execute a reform or rally action on the two infantry battalions, Württemberg and Horn. So here you'll appreciate that the order system is an essential component of this game system and commanders will be constantly trying to change orders in order to perform different actions. Currently under charge orders the only thing Vitsum is permitted to do is advance to contact the enemy. So Vitsum will attempt to change his orders to make ready. He requires a 3 or less, modified to 5 or less with Horn's command bonus. 
he succeeds and now he can move units and or reform units which are in the same or adjacent hex. Now Horn's battalion can't move because it is formation broken. Württemberg can't reform because it's not adjacent. But the Scots can move their full distance, which they do, becoming formation shaken when they ascend the steep slope. Witzum himself joins Württemberg. Meanwhile, Ransau's salvo breaks Leslie's unit, which routes. Uh, Witzum attempts to gain another action, needing two or less. Now, Horn cannot assist because he has already used his influence this round, but he succeeds on a one. Württemberg and Horn both recover one formation level. The Scots advance. They have only a movement allowance of two now because they're shaken. Uh, formation shaken, that is. And Ransau occupies the redoubt, becoming formation broken. Witzum does not get a third action, so play now passes to the cavalry wing. Now, although Shawalitsky has precedence, because he has charge orders, an opposing wing can attempt to preempt the action, no matter what its own orders are. The Imperial replacement commander would like to go first in order to plug the gap created by the Swedish charge last turn and gain the initiative in a counterattack. To successfully preempt the Swedes, the Imperials need a two or less because their orders are currently received charge, but this is modified to three or less because they are a cavalry wing. The commander rolls a zero and succeeds. He can now go before Shawalitsky, uh, but first off he attempts to change his own orders to charge, which again he succeeds in doing. Reedberg Arquebusiers are ordered to charge the Swedish Dragoons, which attempt to hit on a seven but miss, and Reedberg also misses with their pistols. And there are now a number of combats to resolve, which we will take one at a time. Reedberg Arquebusiers are attacking the Dragoons. Now normally light infantry would be automatically eliminated, but because the Dragoons have a strength greater than one, uh, there will be combat. Now Reidberg receives a plus one modifier on the combat matrix for Arquebusiers versus light infantry, and another plus one because the strength ratio, ratio is at least two to one. There is no momentum uh, because the Arquebusiers move less than two hexes and no fire bonus because the unit has expended both pistols. With a plus two modifier, the Imperials roll eight, which is more, in, uh, more than enough to eliminate the Dragoons. Uh, there is no pursuit as the light infantry is considered dispersed, but the cavalry does take a formation hit and advances into the vacated hex. As it does so, it can take reaction fire from the other Dragoon unit, which, however, misses. The next combat is Nicola versus Brink. The Imperials gain a plus two modifier for superior morale and the opponent being formation shaken. Both units fire pistols, so there's no advantage to either side here. Again, a favourable roll breaks the Swedes, who rout, and the Imperials check for pursuit. They have to pursue off-map and are also removed. Finally, Piccolomini and Spinola will attack Kratzenstein. The Imperials would receive several modifiers for pistols, morale, strength ratio, but as the maximum modifier is plus four, we will apply that and roll the die. 
the Swedes are eliminated. Pers uh, Spinola pursues off the map and Piccolomini advances into the vacated hex. Well, with the Imperial commander pursuing off map, uh, that wing cannot attempt another action. But you can see that they have been very successful in repelling the Swedish attack. Uh, play would now pass to the Spanish command, but we will call a halt there. I hope you've enjoyed this brief playthrough and have gained some idea of the system's mechanics. To be sure, playing on the table does involve a lot of map clutter, as there are several markers that are used, but um, I have found a pair of tweezers eminently suitable for getting round those problems, and I'm now a absolute devotee of the system. My thanks to the game's designer, uh, Ben Hull, and the team at GMT, and Knut Grunitz for the Vassal module I've been using in this demonstration. And of course, not least, thanks to you for watching. Bye for now.